My name is Chris, and oh boy, do I have a winner for you today. Welcome to the Vinyl Attack. Attack! One of the positives I've found about the limited social media applications I use is that from time to time they suggest a product that might interest me. Now, to be clear, I'm not a fan of my browsing history being peddled online to various vendors vying for my hard-earned money. But after all, my Instagram page was what suggested the turntable revival IKEA backspacers to me, and I couldn't be happier with those. Of course, for every clever and useful product the internet manages to shove down your throat, there are an innumerable amount of shysters making substandard items that have plenty of money, it would seem, to put ads everywhere you look. Say hello to the Easy Vinyl Crackles Remover. I was fortunate enough to come across this gem while posting a photo to the Vinyl Attack Instagram page, and the inner skeptic in me was instantly drawn to it. If I was seeing this ad, certainly others were, and perhaps some of them might even believe the claims that this liquid could indeed remove crackles and scotches from your vinyl records. With this in mind, there was no way I could pass up an opportunity to bring this item home and give it a try for the posterity of record collectors everywhere, so I took a quick snapshot of the ad and went to their website later that evening to see what I'd be ordering behind the safety of a VPN. Right away, I had a little confusion as to who really made the miracle solution and started laying odds on the chances that this bottle would actually show up once I'd placed my order. You see, the sponsored ad on Instagram was from some company called Mary Stones, and yet the web address being associated with the ad was from something else called CoolIzzy.com. Upon doing some research online, I was unable to find any site, social media or otherwise, that used the handle Mary Stones, so I simply decided to try the attached website to see what I would encounter there. CoolIzzy.com, which is spelled one way in their branding and logo, and another in their web address itself, seems to be one of those buy-anything-you-can-think-of-in-one-spot kind of spaces. I'm reminded of the as-seen-on-TV stores and malls before that sort of thing finally made its way to the internet as well. They might have called it the easy shopping site, as it would appear that everything they sell is easy. Easy paint squeezer, easy stone polish, because you wouldn't want to be without that. Easy press-on nails, easy all-purpose cleaner, a mere 25 bucks for 100 milliliters. And I'm sure the easy propane refill adapter is of the highest quality, foolproof, and completely safe for all. Yes, I knew I was setting myself up for failure upon entering this site and looking for my own bottle of Easy Vinyl Crackles Remover, but at this point it was like watching a train wreck. There wasn't any way I could not show you this product. The comedic value alone made it worth spending the $19.99. Besides, that was after the 30% promo discount, so how could I go wrong? Well, right off the bat, the shipping. After being so happy to make use of their 30% off promo discount, I was treated to $7.95 to ship the bottle to me. It was at this point I'd realized it'd almost be certainly coming directly from China, and I'd have no idea when it might arrive, if ever. Unfortunately, I don't remember how it happened, as this was some time back, but I was able to apply an additional 10% discount code to my order. Things are starting to look up. That $7.95 shipping would effectively be reduced to $5.95, bringing my grand total to just under $26. You guys are certainly worth that kind of an investment, so this was a no-brainer. Well, it was a no-brainer until I looked even further at my detailed receipt. You see, there was this odd section of the checkout page that included an option to tip the Cool Easy team. In all my years, I'd never seen an option to tip the company for simply shipping out an item, and this should have given me an idea on how the rest of this transaction would go. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm happy to tip when it's appropriate. I tip the pizza guy. I tip my guys at the car wash. Hell, I even tip the parking attendant, and I can definitely tell you that I over-tip my bartender all the time. But tipping is an option for shipping? I think I'll take a pass. Or I thought I'd take a pass. As I moved on with my purchase, I saw a $2 charge in my bill that I simply couldn't remove, and I also couldn't account for. I have the product. I have the shipping. That should be the end of it. A little tip box was in check, so what the hell was this anyway? Not wanting to disappoint any of you, I was already locked into this purchase, so I was just going to have to live with this mystery $2 charge and leave it as one of the great unanswered questions of the universe. The pyramids, Stonehenge, and now this. Or that's what I thought I'd have to do until I clicked the complete purchase button and discovered on the last page that the kind folks at CoolIzzy.com had decided to add a 10% tip on their own accord and simply didn't give a shit if I liked it or not. I wasn't surprised, but I was a bit frustrated. 
No matter, the order is placed, and with any luck, I'd say before long to share the good news with you. A mere month later, and my very unassuming package arrived. I'd like to say it was packed with care and extra attention to safety and detail, since I did give them a tip for such great service, whether I wanted to or not. But hey, this little bubble wrap envelope thing is just as good, right? I feverishly opened the package in breathless anticipation when I noticed that this wasn't even the same damn bottle. While the very official looking ad on Instagram and the cool Izzy site alike showed me a bold yellow and red lettering Easy Vinyl Crackles remover, I ended up with some f***ing thing called Scratched Wax. Scratched Wax? What the hell was that? I suppose the bottle is the same shape and size, and the design, while more verbose, still looks similar. I guess it can stand to reason that the contents would be the same as well. There's clearly no way the cool Izzy people could botch my order this bad, right? Especially after putting that little something extra into their coffers to make it worth their while. Although I'll probably never know for sure because I can't read the language on the bottle, which I'm guessing is Mandarin, they were kind enough to list the product features, method of use, and matters needing attention in English. That last one couldn't possibly be important anyway. So, being the research hound that I am, I took a look around to find out what the Shima Company's scratched wax had to say for itself. As it turns out, the marketing here would seem to show that this little bottle wasn't intended for record repair, but the automotive industry, and not a moment too soon judging by these exceptional results repairing scratches on these clearly not photoshopped images. Now the chances are exceedingly high that the contents of this bottle are the very same in my coveted bottle of Easy Vinyl Crackles Remover, but unless a viewer can translate what has been sent to me, I suppose we'll never know. That giant disappointment aside, I intend to test this product all the same using a few records I picked up at the local record store. As far as I can tell, the company who made these is long gone, so we should be free of any copyright infringement. If you're seeing this video after its initial release and there's no music to be heard, you'll know YouTube made me remove it, and I was clearly wrong. I've taken a few records from the set and given them a thorough cleaning of my ultrasonic. They look to have general wear and tear from years of use, play, and just being shifted about rather carelessly. While nowhere near as bad as some have seen, you'll plainly hear the crackles in them. On one record, I've taken to putting a light scratch in myself using a fork. Yes, I'm a total barbarian, and yes, you'll get to see me do this again on the other side of that same record. But before any of you go up in arms over this, these records are nowhere near my standard for playback, and I picked up the entire set for a mere 10 bucks. I promise you, no one is going to miss them. So let's plug in my test turntable, give these a spin, and see what the clean but not treated records sound like first. Thereafter, I'll apply the scratched wax solution using a microfiber towel and we'll give them another spin. I have a sneaking suspicion that the main ingredient in this bottle is a petroleum distillate that will simply coat the grooves of the record, making the stylus slide across the vinyl easier, which also makes me think that we're going to get a nice coating of gunk. Thankfully, I have a microscope so we can take a look at what, if anything, is happening to the stylus after running across the grooves several times. We'll hear the results after one play, but I fully intend on playing these records several times and taking a picture of the stylus after one play, and then probably ten plays. For reference, here is a photo of a perfectly clean Audio-Technica AT95EX. It's a simple cartridge with a common elliptical diamond stylus, and it only cost me 60 bucks, so I'm not worried if we trash it. I'd imagine that, even if we gunk it up, a little stylus cleaning fluid and brush will get it right back into shape anyway. As you can see, I have a host of stuff on the table here. My test turntable, the scratched wax. I have my D-stand. We're going to hit the record with that first to make sure that we're giving it as best a possible chance for playback using that to remove the static. I'm also going to brush it. I've got my microscope. I'm going to use this, uh, an X-Acto knife, instead of a fork to make the secondary scratch because I already have used a fork once, which is going to make more of a, for lack of a better term, a dull scratch, which means the grooves aren't going to be, they're going to be more uh, damaged in a sense because this will make a cleaner cut. And I'd like to see what will happen with each. Now, my prediction is this is going to be a massive failure. But for 20 bucks and your entertainment, why not give it a go? So let's take this, let's get the D-stat, let's treat the record, and let's put it on the table. And we will play a song or piece of music because it's classical music. And we'll see what it sounds like before any treatment at all. All right, let's take a listen to this and see how it sounds.
I'd say that's fairly normal. I mean, the, the Sonics aren't terrible on this. It's a very old record, which is not necessarily a bad thing at all. But for the wear and tear that it has, the pops and clicks, this is exactly what I would expect from a record. So, we have no instructions that I can read. So, it came with sort of an applicator tip. Don't know why, but I think what I will do is I'm going to apply it to the record first. And then I'm going to move it about with a microfiber towel and see what that gets us. It almost smells a little bit like hand lotion. Kind of a almost nothing sort of a smell. That's interesting. Alright, I have no idea how fast or slow this is going to come out, so this should be interesting. But let's get a little bit... Oh yeah, well... <laughs> There's a reason it smells a little bit like hand lotion. That's kind of what it looks like. That or Elmer's glue. So... Gross. Let's get this spinning again, and I'm going to try to use this to see... Thankfully, this is a direct drive turntable. It's got a strong motor. We should be okay with just pressing down on this, and it shouldn't skip. Or, or stop, or whatever. A little bit it is, and that's okay. This is such a bad idea. This is such a bad idea. I would dare say I put on way too much. But again, there are no instructions for me to really look at and see, hey, is this a good idea? I'm going to stop the motor and I'm going to do this by hand and see if I can't work that in. Oh, this is so sticky. This is almost like, and not surprisingly because it's marketed for cars, this is almost what I would expect to, to put on a car wax. You know, it's, it's that kind of a... <laughs> How can you market this towards somebody? I mean, obviously, the manufacturer has zero scruples because they're marketing this to people. That to, and if you look at the photos, the records that are treated are so cleaned and polished. Uh, I'm going to try to see if I can't polish this a little bit with this rag. Let's see what, see what we can do. It's in the grooves now, so... I don't see how I can possibly get a spit shine like we're seeing in the in the advertisement. I mean, it's going away a little bit, but this is such a bad idea. We're getting black residue, which I find interesting because I clean these with the ultrasonic. This record is clean. Like, there shouldn't be black residue coming off of this. It makes me wonder if there's some sort of a chemical reaction between what's in this bottle and the vinyl itself. I don't know, but we're going to play it anyway. It's drying a little bit. I can feel it being a little less resistant. Yeah, it's polishing a little easier. Maybe that's something I should be doing is letting it sit and dry and then giving it a buff. I don't know because I can't read this. I think I'm still just bitter that I didn't get the actual bottle of Easy Vinyl Crackles Remover because I had my heart set on that. Because what a wonderful title that is. What a great name for a product. Easy Vinyl Crackles Remover, my <laughs> Let's play this. Let's give it a listen. And let's see if there uh, is any less skipping at the very least. And then I'm going to take a look at that stylus and see if we've got a bunch of gunk on there. So clearly, that not only did not fix the cracks or the pops or any of that nature, it made it worse. That sounds awful. And if you look closely at this album, you can see where there was play. And I wonder, <sighs> it's digging the lotion from in the grooves and it's raising it up. And this is absolutely atrocious. I am going to try it on the other side where I did put this lovely scratch right here uh, just to see what it does. But 
quite frankly, I was hoping for so much more than this and the testing is really going to be cut short. But before we do that, let me take this stylus and I wanna see under the microscope what has happened. That's awful. I really feel bad now. I'm gonna go upstairs, I'm gonna clean that, and I'm gonna get it back to spit, polish, and shine so it's gonna work just as it should. I have some other stuff coming up soon. Uh, thank you guys so much for being patient with me while I had the downtime with the flooded basement. I am hoping to be fully back. I think I am right now. Things are going pretty well. I'm still working on sound treatment. I have a couple other surprises. Uh, I have some speakers that came in. I had a cartridge that came in. I'm super excited about this stuff. If you're a patron, you already know what speakers came in. And if you're not a patron, check it out. You might want to sign on board because I try to do that whenever I can. I'll give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek at what's coming up on the show. As awful as this was, and I was hoping for something better, it was still entertaining. It was still fun for me to do. I hope you enjoyed it. It's not what I would say our normal modus operandi on the channel is, but every now and again you have to just kind of goof off and have a little bit of fun. And after the last couple of three weeks that I had with all the nonsense and the flooding and the serious stuff, this was a nice change of pace to just come do something absolutely ridiculous. So thank you guys for, for tuning in once again, for watching me go through this kind of stuff, and I look forward to next time.